before we jump back into the alcove and the work being done there, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I missed a couple weeks getting videos out. As most of you know, my daughter got married in Ireland, and before that, there was a lot of work being done to get ready for the wedding, and I tried real hard to get some videos done and get them scheduled, but I only got one done, so I apologize. And then we were actually gone another week after the wedding because my sister Joe and I and her son and my sister-in-law took an extra week and went to Amsterdam for a little mini vacation that turned out to be rather interesting because Joe hurt her back and had to be in a wheelchair the whole time and I got a violent sinus infection the first day. I haven't had one since I was sick when I fell in that hole in the basement so we've been dragging and moving a little slow so things aren't getting back to normal too fast but I'm working on it and she's here helping me film. We got her sitting in a chair. Um, now we got to figure out how to get her downstairs. But anyway, say hi, Joe. Hi. Anyway, um, we're back and we're trying. So let's get to the alcove. I'm here where I left off last time in the round porch video to pick up with the reconstruction of this area. It's been very, very challenging, mostly because this area is curved and I think I talked a little bit about that in the last video but I don't know if I had any real good shots to show you that so I'm going to back up just a little bit and show you some of the construction of this alcove and why it's so special why it's going to be incredibly hard to put back together and why it's going to be really expensive to get back together let me start by showing you how this area was constructed I showed you a picture before of this area as it was originally built the alcove was just on the ground and the first floor. Above that was an open porch that you could walk out on from one of the second floor bedrooms. The roof structure also served as the floor to that porch. I had a really hard time drawing this out on a piece of paper, so I got crafty again and made a little model. Come on in and take a close look at this. <laughs> Okay. Is there yeah. something you want, Pepper? You're not helping. Pepper, <laughs> Pepper, go ahead. So these are the brick walls with three widths of brick. And on top of the wall, they set just ceiling joist. And unlike in the basement and the other work we've been doing where you saw where the, the joist went into a brick pocket in the wall and was held tight, these are just sitting right on top of the brick. I've got this glued down to make it easier for me, but in reality, they're just sitting there. I couldn't find any form of attachment of these joists to the brick other than the weight of the wood itself and the floor above it. There's no true connection between these joists and the brick. So that's a problem right there. The other problem was the way they waterproofed this Remember, this was originally an open porch, so this would have been the roof of the porch. They, they put some wood on top of it to make it sturdy, and then they came in with a big sheet of galvanized steel and put on top. But I want you to notice a couple of things. These joists sit way back from the edge of the wall, and the reason they did that is because they made a gutter out of galvanized steel, just like they did above that beautiful stained glass window that was ruined, and they set it on the top wall of the building. This type of guttering system is something very close to what's called a box gutter, and it was used pretty often in Victorian times, and they did it so that the gutter was more flush with the wall. Sometimes it was actually the wall, it was set inside the wall so that you couldn't see it at all because they didn't like the look of the gutter. Modern day gutters hang on the outside and you can see them, but they set them either on top of the wall or inset into the wall so that they weren't visible. The problem is that's very hard to repair and get to without taking out the whole structure above. They added some more wood to make a floor and then they built the next wall for the second story and they recessed it from the edge and put another gutter on that wall sitting on this so it had a gutter here and the original gutter here that's good and here's that weird double gutter system there's one around the top and 
in another shallow one. If you look close, there's another gutter around the top of that added on second floor. The roof area above this alcove is tiny. Now there's three gutters that don't work well. There's a saying for this that I can't repeat without violating YouTube language policy, so you just think of your own phrase for it. You can see water standing in the second floor gutter, which now that I'm looking at this, I don't know if we took that gutter off when we did the initial work to remove all the gutters. I'm gonna have to go check on that next time I go to the house. Anyway, the standing water is a huge problem, so let's get back to that failure of the lower gutter. It failed for a couple of reasons. One, just age, because you know nothing lasts forever. But also, the way this was made, this, I'm going to take it off so you can see better. It this falls is, apart quite easily. falls apart easily. <laughs> this is a round building, and so the gutter was a half round circle. Now, to drain, the gutter needs to slope so that water can, you know, go to the low spot and go out a drain hole. Let me show you a picture of the drain here. This drain is way back in this corner and the slope of the building is away from that corner towards the front. Remember when I put that spool of fishing line and it rolled down the floor above? So there's no way for the water to get back to that drain hole. It's all gonna pool here in the front and stay in this gutter and rust this gutter out. And that's exactly where the gutter did fail. Once it rusts and goes away, there's no wood or anything closing in this wall. It's just completely open. So once that rusting occurred, just like above the stairwell, the water came in, ran down, and instead of going in the gutter, ran down in the wall between this brick wall and that beautiful wood wainscoting that we saw demolished in the last video. So year after year, water was just pouring down, pouring down, pouring down, and going in this wall all the right way around and just totally destroyed this section of the building. In a perfect world, I would have taken months to come up with a long-term plan for this area, and then I probably would have had to have applied to the city for permission to change the look of this area. And I would have either ripped off the added room above and go back to the original design, or maybe ripped off the gutter and put something like the roof around that front upper porch. But I didn't have time, so I just had it capped. This is one of those things that gets to me because I had to spend money on something that I know is not a good permanent solution. But I felt like I needed to dry this area out quickly because of the termites. Um, at that infamous window that was open, and you can see this is the cap that was put on the second gutter that was added and this porch was closed in. Lean out down there is the cap on the original gutter that was here when this was an open porch. Once all of the demo had been done, there wasn't much left inside. The lentils were completely gone, the brick was in terrible shape, the floor was bad, the ceiling joists were rotted, and there were a lot of active termites. But they didn't seem to have gotten up past the first floor, which that's good. I'll take that as a win. And I knew going in there'd be a lot of masonry work. I didn't realize just how severe the masonry issues were. See how the center bricks just almost look like filler or a rubble course? They're not very pretty. You can also see where they periodically turn a brick crosswise to tie the three widths of brick together. I thought at first that the ceiling joist didn't look too bad, but a closer inspection revealed much more extensive damage. Surprise, surprise. And it was the first time I could really see how this area was constructed. Is it termite or just water? No, I think it's just water. Moisture. Yeah, just moisture. Yeah, there's no termite. This is up 
the roof of the first floor round room you can see the exposed gutter it doesn't even have a real wall on the outside this has more joists going across but it's rotted and you can see through and I think see the gutter on the outside of that it was such a mess that it was going to take some time to come up with a work plan but an obvious place to start was with the repairing and repointing of the inside width of brick they hung up some tarps and grinding got underway I didn't work on Friday, but the guys came and they've already got this little round room repointed. So it looks really good. This is one of the windows that was removed. And if I hold the camera up, you can see that this window area is curved, following the curve of the room. Even these shutters were made on a curve to fit that radius. That also means that the lintels above have to be curved. And that was probably our biggest problem. Let me tell you what happened there. The first thing Ricardo and I did was make a template of the shape of the lintel out of an old piece of plywood that we had laying around. I took that pattern to a steel fabricator to discuss different manufacturing options. Steel can be curved by rolling, but because the lintel needed to be in an L shape, the whole thing couldn't be rolled in one piece because that L shape gives it strength to keep the steel from bending. So after some discussion with the fabricator, we came up with a plan to make the lintel in two pieces. The flat part would be cut to shape from a piece of steel and then that upright part would be rolled to match the curve and then welded together. It seemed like something easy to do, especially since I had my template. Each window would need two lentils nested together, an inside one and an outside one. The shop was busy and it took a few weeks, but I finally got the call to go pick up the lentils and Ricardo was ready to put them in. He'd already mixed up his mortar. We were ready to go. We got them there and they didn't fit. My template was back at the shop so they loaded up the lentils and I drove back to the shop so I could lay the two together, the template and the lentil, and see what went wrong. When I did that, the lentil wasn't even remotely close to being shaped like my template. I don't know what happened. Thank goodness I'd only had one set made and not all three sets of lentils because these things are very expensive. Of course, I didn't have to pay for the redo because it wasn't my fault. They had that template. Um, I, I don't know what they did. Anyway, I won't bore you with all the details, but this activity went back and forth for nine months with four different attempts. Okay, I'm back at the metals place. David Coker, if you're watching, you'll understand. Janie mentioned very disturbed. This is my umpteenth try to get these lentils made. I even paid extra to have a template made before they started, and I just picked them up. Nothing fits. They've reversed the profile. This side should be wide, this side narrow, and the length is wrong. So these won't even remotely fit in. I've got a crew of masons. I'm paying a lot of money to sit around and they've got nothing to do today. All right. We finally have a winner. The two new prototypes fit. So I'm going to take them back to be fully welded and galvanized. And the end result is that they still never completely got it right. But in the end, Ricardo made them work and we finally got all three windows finished. They're not pretty, 
you can look and see how far this one window is, but they work. I mean, you'd think the fabricator would have set them back to back and make sure they matched and figured out something is wrong, but I'm gonna take a deep breath and let it go because they're up and the windows are secure. During all the waiting, we did lots of other projects like the back porch that you saw, and we did some work on the outside of this round alcove area. If you look close, there's not really much to this alcove. It's mostly windows, but what was there was in terrible shape with big through cracks. The center section ended up being almost a complete rebuild. And it's kind of a complicated area because it has lots of decorative profile on it that we're gonna have to come back and plaster. So Ricardo had to try to do the brickwork as close as he could to that end result that we need to see when it's fully plastered over. This is what it looks like. You can see that mortar's incredibly deteriorated. Backing lintel in and some waterproofing so that if water does get in, it sheds to the outside. Above it. Oh, why did I climb up here? Now I have to climb down. I don't mind coming up, I don't like going down. Once all the brickwork was done down in that lower section, we moved up another level and started looking at the ceiling joist in that area. When the initial demolition was done, I didn't think the ceiling joist looked too bad, but you couldn't really see everything. On closer inspection, it was clear that all the ends of the joists were rotted and not really providing the support they should. And the brickwork was a little funky up here. Okay, what is that? That's a piece of slate. Mm -hmm. I wonder why they put slate there. back of that gutter. I don't know why there's not two more rows of bricks here. If we built that brick, that's still, that's still pretty rotted. Okay, this is one of the beams that had to come down. Hard to tell. Hard to tell if it's water or termite. But whatever it is, it wasn't good. Wow. And then the end of it. Obviously. That's some problems. Jose and I spent some time coming up with a game plan on how to proceed. But one thing that surprised us both was that you could see peeking out behind one of the ceiling joists was part of a big steel beam that spanned the opening between the parlor and that alcove. It was also the site of a pretty giant sized rat's nest. I left and went to the carriage house to shower and clean up before heading back to Houston, but I got a call from Jose wanting me to come back and look at what he found when he took down that ceiling joist next to the steel beam. Careful. Oh, wow. It's good. Yeah, <clears throat> right here's such little bit of rust. A little bit of rust, but yeah. not too bad. Um, maybe I need one there. Put it down. Okay, is this, is that strong enough to stand on? Yeah, that one is good. So I wonder where I wonder where these ties go to. Or what it's bolted onto. Okay, yeah, so we need to put something back up to hold the floor, obviously. Ricardo knows me. I climbed up the side, but I can't get down. He brought me the ladder already. 
it was time to do a little more demolition. You can really see just how rusted some of that steel was. And after we got things cleaned up, it was time to bring in the new lumber and get started on rebuilding everything. Fixing the ceiling joist in this area was super easy. We ended up only having to completely replace two joists. That long span that's up next to the steel beam doesn't really support any weight. It's just needed for nailing the floor above too. Because the joists are not set in pockets, there was plenty of room to work and maneuver things around. And where the ends were only slightly rotted, we just sistered on some new wood, as you've seen done in a lot of other videos. For those of you that haven't seen that, it just means bolting two pieces together. There's still a lot of work to be done on the floor above. You can see how deteriorated the subfloor and that sheet metal is. At some point, all that will have to come out and be replaced, but that's something that can be done way down the road. There are a lot of hard decisions to be made before any of that work gets done, and I'll save that discussion for another video. For now, the immediate next step will be to get these windows closed in. This area has been open to the elements for almost 18 months at this point. And actually, this video was hard to put together because that work did stretch out over such a long period of time, and for the first six months of that, I wasn't really shooting any video. In hindsight, I would have done a lot of things differently, but I can't change that, so as I said before, I'll just move on and have a few more lessons learned under my belt for next time. For the die-hard construction nerds watching, I'll be posting a separate short video to detail the problems with getting the curved lintels made. That was a huge part of the delay in this whole process. As always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you back as work continues to save this incredible house here in Galveston, Texas. My screen showed it probably had the red button. You you did that on purpose. I did not. You did it on purpose to make me. I did not because I don't want to drive home. <laughs> <laughs> I would not put you in jeopardy because I do not want to drive home. Okay. Okay. How did I film my hand? I was holding it like this. I don't think you were and filming you were, it. I don't think you were filming at all. You were on my screen. Yes, because it just shows what you see. It doesn't. If there's not a if there's not a black button, it's not filming. Okay. Do you want me to come hold no. the scaffolding? No. <laughs> do you want? No. I, I can, can do it. I can help. I can. I can do it. I do it all by myself. <laughs> this is your battle cry. No, I can do it. Tom Cruise does his own stunts. Yeah. Where's, where's my? Oh. Oh. Tom Cruise has an ambulance on standby. Okay. All right. See, I can do it. Sure. I can do it. I, can do it. I did it. I'm just going to be, I'm just, I'm a little dirty. Okay. Ta-da. Ta-da.